Lisa Ann Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and welcome to Third Thursdays with Lisa Ann. This is the November issue. So, make sure that you get your November-December rug hooking magazine. Snow Geese by Helen Mar Parkin is on the cover. Great issue, lots of good stories, uh, lots of good articles and education. Now today, what we're going to cover is something a little bit different. We've talked about colors for backgrounds. We've talked about uh, how to put dyed wools and textures and how many colors can you put in a background. But I get calls or emails that say, help, how do I hook Higgly Piggly, Echo, Puzzle Pieces, can I use all three? Now you're talking about pinwheels, what's pinwheels? So today we're gonna decipher it and give you kind of a roadmap on what to use when you're hooking your background. So first we're gonna talk about Echo. And Echo is something that uh, can be used so effectively, especially when you're going to springboard. Now, as you will see, this is the maple leaves from the um, fall issue of Rug Hooking Magazine. That was the pattern insert. This is the leaf peeper runner. And I used all scraps. I made them bright. I used all scraps. I used all kinds of neutrals like crazy khaki plaid. Uh, country hound, any neutral that was a beige and gray neutral, and I cut it. But how do you make that work for you? So you've hooked your leaves, or you want to hook one or two leaves and put your background in, because we know you don't leave your background till last. So what you do is we want to focus this, and I wanted this to kind of look like it was on the pond or it was on um, the, the winter grasses. So you start with echo. Echo is an easy and effective way to use your wools, especially if you're using textures. Echo means you go around the subject. Echo means you keep going around the subject. And you go around and around, you pull, you just pull and hook. It's a swatch bag, all the noodles are cut. You put it on your frame or you pull it from a bag. You don't peek, those that peek, we know who you are. And you just keep following it. And it makes a halo, an echo, and then you move on to the next one. And where they join together, especially like down in here, it becomes a puzzle piece. And the puzzle piece is fantastic because now you're creating echoing with puzzle pieces to take up all the little pieces that the echoing doesn't fit. So you echo around this leaf, you echo around this leaf, and you can see where they join right there. That's the little piece that is the puzzle piece. Same thing with this corner. So by echoing this rug, echoing these leaves, it created that effect that they were sitting on something and it was very, very effective. It would. This is the best background directional choice for this type of a rug. So here's another leaf rug. This is acorn and oak leaves. Here I used a very tone-on-tone -tone texture. And this tone-on-tone -tone texture um, didn't have much movement, but these leaves are pretty brilliant. They have a lot of movement in them. Uh, they're pretty dynamic. So what you do with something like this where you need to calm the background or give yourself a dark background, and you're using one texture, not multiples, is first, you go around and you make sure that you, and you echo this. This is a combination. You echo to make sure that you have hit all these little points on the leaves. This is a much smaller cut. And you make sure you go around the acorns. And while, once you do that, you may do one or two rows. Then everything else was done in puzzle pieces. I just drew the puzzle pieces in and pulled and hooked. So it had an overall effect. The I did the echoing on this was more of an outline because you really couldn't see the echo, but it was to define. When you want to define your object and have your background just a dark background that sits there, that's what you do. So this is one way where you're going to just outline, then you're going to put in puzzle pieces. And this was a tone on tone plaid, and that's what made that choice the right choice. Now, let's talk a little bit about dyed wool. We're gonna go back in time here. This is called Star of the Barn. Um, and Star of the Barn has a dyed background. The dyed background was very light, very modeled. It was a spot dye. And so 
this had a lot of color we needed to make sure that the background was light but really stood up to the corners and here we are echoing and you can see the echoing to make sure echoing works because i want that center motif to come at you so i echoed it i echoed around each of these half moons and the triangles so that you got their shape very well and once you do that Whatever's left in between, you fill in. And you can see that I filled this in in a puzzle piece. There's a little puzzle piece. A lot of times, once you start this and you're happy, the background talks to you, the direction talks to you, and you see that you've echoed, you've echoed, but you can't echo this piece, so you come in here with just a little piece in here and fill in. And this dyed background really showed off the echoing. And sometimes a dyed background is just perfect. And when it is and the echoing works, you're in good shape. So this is echoing and echoing to keep the half moons, echoing to bring the rooster out. And then whatever was left was just filled in. And that was with dyed wool. So what happens when it's a landscape or a primitive landscape? A home, this is a Ralph Burnham, a Homeward Bound. In here, in the water, a lot of people feel you have to do it with all the waves, but if you use texture and it is a primitive, this is where Higgly Piggly comes in. And Higgly Piggly, no, it's not the Piggly Wiggly, but it's the Higgly Piggly, and you Higgly Piggly it. The texture was cut, it was a plaid, it was cut two ways, and then I just followed it in a Higgly Piggly fashion and I made all these loops to make it look like it was movement and so that it wasn't a heavy background. And in here in particular, you can see it. This right here is a line that accents the, the ship and then you get the water. Now, when you get over here to the mountains, it's not a higgly piggly. We can't higgly piggly it out. There's not enough room to, it would have looked really odd. So this is where we went to an echo. We went to an echo. Here, we did Higgly Piggly again. Okay, there was two textures. And you can see I put my first lighter texture in and started the Higgly Piggly. This way, it filled the space. It defined this mountain behind the ship. It accented this mountain behind the ship, but gave you some motion. So this is a good case of where Higgly Piggly, right here, right here and even in the darker water that feeds in the higgly piggly worked really really well so here's a good example because everybody always asks what's higgly piggly here is higgly piggly even the mountain you can see the dark that i put in this is all done in higgly piggly a lot of times with primitive landscapes or landscapes you don't want a lot of motion you just want the color to show so higgly piggly is a fantastic choice for direction of hooking well here we're going to come to this big baby this is another burnham it's a bed rug i know a lot of you watch this being hooked it is hooked this shows you when you have to spance a large rug and you're spancing it two different ways. You've got your motifs, and then you've got your border, and you need both to kind of stand up to each other. This is where you're, you're, and you're using textures. This is where echoing and puzzle pieces, because you need to really cover a lot of real estate, so to speak. This is a lot to cover. But by echoing this, and echoing the flowers, you see that this becomes more of a curve. You get more of the curve to the point, more of the curve. In here, it accents the points. In here, we've come into that. But when you have so many florals so close together, after you echo it, you end up again with shapes or puzzle pieces. Higgly Piggly would not work with this because it would not show off the motifs. And it's an interesting thing. Don't change your direction with the border. The border is an extension of your main rug. 
So as you can see, although I changed color, I didn't change my technique so that they complement each other. And by doing that and complementing each other, it makes a more uniform looking rug. It also accents what you want to see and lets the background sit down. But in here, we went around, we went around, and then you have l larger spances where the echoing doesn't work, then you have to go to puzzle pieces. But you have to make it uniform. When you have a border that is this wide and this big of a rug, whatever you do in the center, whatever direction of hooking, you do have to repeat this outside in the border for continuity. So this works really well with larger pieces. This happens to be only one texture, Oyster Bay, and then Comfort Stripe. I did not mix a lot of textures because there was a lot of color going into this one. All right. So now let's talk about, we're going to go back to the leaf because this was a real simplistic way to show you. Here is a halo or an echo. It's done in a lighter color, almost a white. And then after two rows, there's only two little rows, it was done not in puzzle pieces, but in higgly piggly. It was just wound around any way that it wanted, but it is a circular rug. A lot of times higgly piggly works better in a circular rug. So the echo set the leaf, then the higgly piggly went out and this gold line created the circle. And then there's one thin off-white line to concrete the circle. Then it was done higgly-piggly. Because it is a neutral, because it is a solid, and you can see every loop, this is another reason the higgly-piggly works a lot better, especially if you're concerned about seeing every loop. Talking about circular rugs, we're going to go to Seasons. And this is the Seasons just finished with the Hunter's Moon. So the Hunter's Moon was hooked in puzzle pieces, but as you can tell, I echoed the background just once. I didn't go all out. And I have a what we call a textured piece and a dyed piece. And from there, I created puzzle pieces. I wanted an all over effect, but I had to have the moon very circular, very prominent. This is a silhouette. Everything had to come in and be outlined very close. So by doing that, this one little echo, I echoed then puzzle pieced. So this is with the circulars, you always have to make sure you echo to keep that in its circular form. Another good hint. When you're doing light dyed backgrounds, a lot of times the echoing really works to focus back into the image. So in the Celtic tree and ice skates for us, these are echoed. This is mother of pearl. This is gull. They're lightly dyed. Uh, they are spot dyes. They were cut uh, in two different sizes. This is a four and a five. This is a six and a little bit of an eight that was cut. So we've echoed so that all of the skates and the plaid have appeared and they look and the holly is there. And we echoed it out because when you echo out, especially with something as light as mother of pearl, it creates an effect and it focuses back onto the skates, almost a watercolor effect. But then once you echo out, as far as you did, you have your corners. And in this case, I did a higgly piggly in the corner. I did, I did not do puzzle pieces. Everything here is a higgly piggly. The colors are soft. The cut was small. I didn't want to see every loop. So I went higgly piggly. On this one, I went puzzle pieces. A little bit darker, larger cut. So what I'm telling you is a lot of times it's the value of your background, whether it's light or dark, and also the size of your cut. And you can try it. If you don't like it, you can always take it back out. But with a light background and you have a, a motif you want to stand up, you always have to echo. Now, this is echoed for four rows. This is echoed for more than four rows. 
All right, let's go back to a landscape where we've combined a few things. And when you combine a few things, that's always a, creates either a, a good look. This is Higgly Piggly, and this is Higgly Piggly at its best. Let's face it, the background is scenery. So you have to create the walkways or the path she's walking on. Then back here, this is just your back grasses. This was done in puzzle pieces. Then we went up into here, and this is Higgly Piggly to create mountains. Higgly Piggly is a great way, if your background is mountains, to create mountains. Higgly Piggly or puzzle pieces. This, the sky, instead of doing Higgly Piggly, I did a little bit of Higgly Piggly, but you can tell I went into puzzle pieces. I wanted the bulk of the sky to be the lighter color, not the darker. So I used Higgly Piggly to let your eye follow and then filled in with puzzle pieces. So this is a great way when your background is scenery uh, to give it an effect. On that note, we're gonna go to the Woodland Santa because the background is scenery. This is a different case altogether. Woodland Santa is on a tile floor, which is very linear, but you need to break it to make him stand. This is the pinwheel effect. You, might, you know, it's winter, you want it to look snow. You want it to have some pop. So, a pinwheel, you start hooking, just like this with your texture or your dyed. You do another one over here, you can draw it in, and one, and then they, can, they do butt up to each other, and then you fill it in with a puzzle piece. This creates almost a snow effect. So then, when we get up here, there wasn't room. There was no room to put pinwheels or snow in. So this is the echo. This makes his jacket a little bit rounder. It accents his body. Then when we got up to the top, this, and, and it could have been done in pinwheels, but instead we echoed a little bit, and this is all puzzle pieces. These are, it's a little bit of higgly piggly, and then filled in with puzzle pieces. So this is a way to combine all three techniques into one rug that creates a background. But this is very effective if you want a snow or just a background with a motion to create fireworks, snow, uh, whatever you would like. It's an effective directional tool for a background. This is Thanksgiving Wishes. I told you we had a lot of examples today. And Thanksgiving Wishes, the focus is the turkey, obviously. So here, the flag that is in the back, you have to make sure the wishbone is going to show. So you echo the wishbone across all the colors, in, in the colors as the stripe goes across it. But after that, you really don't need to keep echoing it. It would have been a little too much. So for two rows in each color, it is echoed. Then here is a puzzle piece right here. Here's another puzzle piece. Here's another puzzle piece. So puzzle pieces were used, and here's one, a predominant one, Puzzle pieces were used to create an overall background to mimic the flag. And by doing that, you've set the wishbone up because the wishbone's light, this is a lighter background. But by the echo, you set it up and then the puzzle pieces create an overall look. So the background is there, but the focus is still the wishbone and the turkey. So what happens in a geometric? Well, in a geometric, this is a little different because this is prudence, and you need to make sure that in this geometric or in this overall print, tile print, that each of these tiles is distinct. So each one is distinct. You can fill it one or two rows. In the case of prudence, there's not a lot in between. There's not a lot of space. So what you do is you echo the first motif, you echo the second motif. If there is anything left in between, you higgly-piggly to finish it. You cannot echo all the way to each one. It would create um, gaps, or you might pack 
God forbid we don't want you to pack. So these are just ways that you can do that. And as you can see, it made each of the Prudence um, tiles very distinct. You got all the points in, you filled in, but it created just an overall background because your focus is on the Prudence pattern itself. The same thing is for single paisley because you're echoing it out and this is a pillow and a lot of times with the pillows you do want to echo them out to look back at the shape it's a small piece and then each of the corners is a puzzle piece and this is just done from one texture let's talk about combining when you have a busy pattern this is the fa la la tree skirt okay so you have to echo, you're just filling in, you can echo or puzzle piece. The background in this case is just there. But in here in the center, you really don't see it, it's under the tree, but you do want some motion. And this was crazy khaki plaid. So I pinwheeled sporadically through there to give you some motion so it's not flat. And then once I pinwheeled, I filled in with puzzle pieces. There's so much going on here. This had to be calm and quiet, but I didn't want it flat. This is a good example of how the puzzle, of how the um, pinwheels work in conjunction with the puzzle pieces. Okay, one or two more, and then we'll go, and then I'll show you some wools. Here's Miss Mistletoe. Miss Mistletoe, the background is part of the deco, and we want her to be the focus. So here, we didn't echo. This stands up based on color. We did echo a little bit, but this is more of puzzle pieces put in to give it an overall look. Same thing here, because you don't see the background or what it is until you step back from this piece. This happens to be the tree and the snowflake. But down here on the border is a different story. We have this line. This created the higgly piggly. So by doing a little bit of echo in the higgly piggly, you got a soft side border and a soft bottom border. So the lettering came out, but you, it didn't overpower the piece itself. And that's when you're doing something where there is a face, where you're using mixed media, this is where you need to just use your little puzzle pieces, calm background, um, and let, let it stand on its own. Here we are with Sakina, and then we have one more, and I'll show you some of the wools and how to cut them. Okay, Sakina is an overall background. Rosie was the background. This is a tone-on-tone, -tone per se, and it's color layering. I layered the colors. So here, I used a lot of echo. I used a lot of echoing because you needed to see the color layering process. And echoing these spaces, we go back to like the Christmas tree skirt, uh, like the Burnham bed rug. These are all just little pieces left in between. And so you fill them in as puzzle pieces so they don't overpower your echoing. When you want something to sweep, here you are echoing it to sweep echoing it to sweep in here is a puzzle piece it fills in nicely it fills in calmly with the color layering process it works um, and that is a good combination a great combination here we are with jack and jill and this is the last rug that we'll go over on this one on this on in this segment but this one here jack and jill again we're looking at scenery jack and jill are the focus your background and how do you start to hook it okay well here this is um just done in higgly piggly it was a herringbone herringbone let's pay attention when you're using a herringbone because it has a light and a dark higgly piggly not puzzle but higgly piggly gives you an overall look like grass and then we came up the sides. This is spring plaid that I've showed you before. I dissected into the blue and the yellow green. Well, here we echoed to make a hill. Again, we're in that half round mode. So we echoed it to create that half round. Now we have this spance of sky. 
Well, what do we do with the spans of sky? The spans of sky, you have to make sure that their rabbit ears are there. You have to make sure that you've echoed their rabbit ears. Then what you fill in with is puzzle pieces because you're using a texture that is two-tone and you don't want lines. If you notice, this has an overall look. So with the overall look of puzzle pieces drawn in and filled, not the blue or the yellow is predominant. It's an overall look to look like a sky that's reflecting off the hills. So I think that's a lot of examples um, for how to hook in what direction. So let's look at some wools. Stripes always work. Stripes work because you get, this is sage o sage, you get all the tones in between. And if you cut it with the stripe for part of your background against your stripe for the other, then your options are puzzle pieces you can echo. So if you cut it across the stripe and you want to echo a leaf, we're going to use a leaf. You cut it across the stripe, you echo for a few rows, then if you cut it with the stripe, you can puzzle piece it in between. So a stripe is a good choice if you're going to, it's not a good choice for Higgly Piggly, you can, but it's a good choice for echoing and puzzle pieces. Also for pinwheels, for pinwheels. Here is what I used in the bunnies, spring plaid. I cut this piece out for the yellow, and then I cut this piece out for the sky. So here we are with the two distinct lines this worked really well for echoing and puzzle pieces. This worked well for higgly piggly. And this is a herringbone. See, this is a herringbone in here. You have to pay attention to your wool, and higgly piggly works really well with a herringbone. Geo green. A lot going on with geo green. This can be used great because you can draw your, you can take this piece out, draw this for a higgly piggly, and fill this in with higgly piggly for mountains or trees or a tree line. Um, it does work okay for puzzle pieces, not so good for pinwheels, but this is a great higgly piggly background wool. Here's a calm background. This is Ocean City. Uh, this is one case where it's an overall plaid, so you can use any of the methods, higgly-piggly, puzzle pieces, pinwheels, echoing. Any of that would work here. If you were doing a large rug like Sakina, Ocean City would work great as a background and give you the overall effect like Rosie. Yankee Pinstripe. Yankee Pinstripe is a great background. It's not blue, it's not gray, it's not taupe, it's all of these. It absorbs the color around it. And this makes great pinwheels. Uh, you can do a pinwheel with this and then fill in with the pinwheel and it will look like a frosty evening. So again, this is a wide stripe, but if you did your pinwheels with this, filled in with these two, it looks great. Uh, it is a herringbone. You can higgly piggly with it, but pinwheel and filling in with puzzle is good. Uh, if you're doing blue hills, blue mountains, this would be a good higgly piggly for blue mountains. So I hope I haven't confused your issue. I hope that you now understand direction of hooking for your background when you sit down to hook it uh, with some color choices. And I look forward to seeing you in December. I hope that all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with friends and family. We'll see you in December.